the M1 Garand, 30 caliber semi-automatic rifle. The M1 Garand is one of the single most famous and recognizable rifles in the entire world. It served as the standard issue battle rifle for all of the United States land forces throughout the entirety of World War II, replacing the five-shot bolt-action Springfield 30-06 caliber M1903 rifle, which the U.S. had fought with in World War I. The Garand is a semi-automatic gas-powered rifle operated with a long-stroke piston. One pull of the trigger fired the round, and the gas expelled moved the bolt back, which ejected the spent casing. A spring mechanism would then drive the bolt forward again, replacing the new round from the internal magazine mechanism and chambering that round. This is what allows for semi-auto fire unlike the bolt-action rifles of the time that required the shooter to manually open and then close the bolt after each shot. After the First World War, bolt-action rifles reigned supreme as the ultimate small arm for modern militaries. Countries all over the world either purchased bolt-action rifles from European powers or tried to rework and update their old rifles in the event of another war. As the world focused on bolt-action rifle production, the United States, almost immediately after the end of World War I, began looking into the creation of a self-loading semi-automatic rifle that could replace the aging bolt-action rifles that had served during the previous war. A call was sent out in the interwar period for inventors and gunsmiths to come up with this new self-loading rifle. A French-Canadian inventor by the name of John Cantius Garand was one of the inventors to answer this call. Garand had first shown up on the radar of the U.S. government in World War I when he pitched his own light machine gun design to the United States military. Although his machine gun design was never adopted, the U.S. government gave him the position of consulting engineer at the Springfield Armory in Massachusetts. After introducing his first version of the Garand rifle to the U.S. government, they quickly hired him and set him to work on producing and improving his design. Garand first designed the semi-automatic gas-operated rifle to accommodate 276 caliber ammunition. The U.S. Army wanted the weapon to cater for the 30-odd 6 caliber Springfield ammunition they had used in their bolt-action rifles and asked the inventor to redesign the rifle accordingly. Garand obliged and redesigned the rifle to the U.S. Army's new specifications. The M1 Garand was finally finished in 1936, only three years before the outbreak of World War II. The rifle was then entered into mass production in 1937 and first delivered to American troops en masse in 1938. The United States became the only country in World War II to have a semi-automatic rifle as a standard infantry weapon, which gave them a significant advantage over enemy forces. Designed for long-range fire, the Garand was equipped with fully adjustable rear sights to account for wind and elevation. It had a muzzle velocity of 2,800 feet per second and an effective range of nearly 500 yards. In the hands of American troops, the Garand was a game-changer for squad tactics and arms production around the world. Compared to the bolt-action rifles of any other military of the time, the M1 Garand offered a much increased rate of fire of roughly 30 aimed rounds a minute and a maximum fire rate of up to 40 or 50 rounds a minute. This high rate of fire meant that soldiers could make quick follow-up shots that increased their likelihood of hitting their target. Since all riflemen were equipped with Garands, even a small number of riflemen could put out a volume of fire that could suppress large areas in a similar fashion to a machine gun. This type of suppressing fire, especially with only a few soldiers firing, was almost completely unheard of with bolt-action rifles. Along with its high rate of fire, the M1 Garand came with an 8-round top-loading end-block clip. During the Second World War, most rifles carried only 5, maybe 6 rounds in them the only exception to this rule being the 10-round magazines of the British Lee Enfield rifles. The internal magazine and clip system of the Garand saw the clip eject out of the top of the rifle once the final round had been fired, thus opening up the inside of the gun for a new clip of eight rounds. Once all eight rounds had been fired and the clip ejected out of the weapon, a very distinct ping would sound. GIs were concerned that this noise alerted to enemy forces to the fact that they were out of ammo, potentially making them an easy target. This is however questionable as the noise of gunfire and artillery would drown out the noise of a Garand ping and other US GIs were likely to be nearby to return fire at the enemy when a US soldier was reloading. Another issue faced by the loading system of the Garand was the difficulty to load the clip into the rifle. Once the last shot in the end block clip had been fired, the bolt opened, therefore allowing a new clip to be inserted into the rifle. 
The only issue was that once the clip had been put into the gun, the bolt was designed to go forward. This meant that soldiers reloading their Garand had to be careful or else they would end up with what is often referred to as Garand thumb, where the bolt action would close on the thumb of the reloading soldier. Aside from these minor drawbacks, the M1 Garand was well received by the soldiers who took it into battle all across the world, and the Garand was eventually praised as the greatest battle implement ever devised by General George S. Patton. The Garand was known for its power, accuracy, and durability. After the war, the Garand became a symbol of American might and remained as the main battle rifle of the United States for another 12 years after the end of World War II and was used all throughout the Korean War. In 1957, the Garand was eventually replaced as the standard issue rifle of the United States military by the M14. The M14 was an improved version of the M1 Garand that featured a detachable box magazine and a flash hider at the end of the barrel. Aside from these changes, the M14 was still essentially a Garand. After being replaced by the M14, the United States government were left with millions of Garands in their stockpiles, almost all left over from the 4 million Garands produced during the Second World War. With more guns than they knew what to do with, the United States government began selling them as surplus to the civilian market and giving them to foreign countries as war aid. The most prominent recipient of the M1 Garands as military aid was South Vietnam. In Vietnam, the M1 Garand was also used extensively as a sniper rifle by the South Vietnamese troops during the Vietnam War. This version of the Garand was known as the M1D and sported a conical flash hider at the end of the barrel and a scope offset to the left of the chamber in order to allow the clip to be expelled out of the top of the receiver. These weapons were not as well liked by the South Vietnamese military. The ARVN soldiers tended to be smaller than the average American soldier. The large 30 caliber round and the fact that the Garand rifle was long and heavy was sometimes too much for them to handle. Meanwhile, the AK-47s, oftentimes used by the North Vietnamese soldiers and the Viet Cong, were too technologically advanced for the Garand to keep up with, since they were equipped with 30 round detachable magazines and could fire fully automatically. Along with the Garands sent to South Vietnam, a small number of Garands came into Vietnam for the American soldiers. These Garands were usually given to rear guard troops, artillery crews, and military policemen in order to free up the more advanced M14s and M16s for frontline troops. By the late 20th century, the Garand had been completely phased out of combat roles and almost entirely removed from the U.S. Armed Forces. Today, the Garand can still be seen in use with military drill teams, and military funeral honor guards where a three-volley salute will be performed to honor the deceased.